Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm a final year. Sorry. <laughs> totally nice. You got it, Charlotte? So, Charlotte. Oh, sorry. Ready? Deep breath. Okay. Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm a final year civil engineering student at the University of Queensland. And today I'm joined with Dr. Lisa Ray Moore, a lecturer of civil engineering. And today we'll be answering some of your questions. Thank Thanks. You. Charlotte, why did you choose engineering at the University of Queensland? I think I chose it because of all the opportunities it provided. I mean, like from the social sport to the clubs and societies to the international opportunities such as exchange, it helped us so much. And then also um, with engineering, the first year engineering learning centre, that was a really great resource too. Excellent, excellent. And you're studying civil, so why did you choose to study civil engineering? Um, I chose it because of like the diverse career paths. I'm quite indecisive with what I want to do and I think the fact that it provides so many different pathways from like geotechnical to environmental to consulting or construction, like there's just so many opportunities which I love. I heard there's changes coming to the new uh, Bachelor of Engineering, can you tell us about that? It's really exciting Charlotte, we've spent the last 18 months talking to industry, talking to our alumni industry advisory boards, our graduates, and we've been asking them what will the future engineering graduate need? What skills will they need? What will the future look like for engineering graduates so that we can craft a new curriculum that places our graduates at the forefront of engineering in 2024 and 2034 and beyond. So it's really exciting to see those changes come through, not just first year, but through all the years. Awesome. Um, so in your opinion, who should study engineering? If you want to make a difference in the world, you should be an engineer. So I think engineering is the most amazing profession because every moment of every day, an engineer has touched what you do. From when you turn the light switch on, turn a tap on and you've got water, you flush the toilet, you drive on the roads, you drive across bridges, you watch your computer, everything that you do every day requires great engineering. So I think we're the most powerful profession in the world. <coughs> I agree. <laughs> so Charlotte, what's a day in the life of a UQ engineering student look like? So I guess it changes a bit over time from the start of your degree. I guess there's more contact hours. So I was coming in for practice and lectures and tutorials often and working with my team. And now in fourth year, I still do all those things, but I now part-time, I work part-time at an engineering place as well. So what's changed in the engineering degree and why? Lots of change, Charlotte. It's really exciting. We went and we spoke to industry and we've redesigned our curriculum so that from day one students are hands-on, they're in the laboratory, they are building, they are doing engineering and we've carried that all the way through the curriculum. So from year one through to their final year on campus, they can't avoid being an engineer. We've asked industry, um, what does an industry facing curriculum look like and you will do an industry facing project every semester that you're an engineering student. So how much industry involvement will that entail? The answer is a lot because we know that our graduates are really highly valued by industry and that part of making our graduates the most employable graduates is actually embedding those industry experiences in the curriculum so that when they actually go out into the workforce like you're doing at the moment, you can actually translate your learnings from university out into your experience in industry and it's really complementary. So mm. there'll be lots of industry facing projects, there are um, components in courses that are industry facing, um, it's literally been threaded all the way through the curriculum. So in the new program, what majors can you do? The new program is going to have the core specialisations, so chemical, civil, electrical, mechanical, mechatronics and software, so they're our core specialisations. But in addition to those specialisations, you'll be able to do a major that aligns with that specialisation. So civil engineers will be able to do a major in structural engineering. Civil and chemical engineers are going to be able to do a joint major in environmental engineering. So that was part of the feedback we got from industry that there are areas in engineering now that are cross discipline and we need to prepare our graduates for that. So there are some really exciting new majors, biomedical engineering, 
the list goes on, it's a really long list, but those majors allow you to develop a depth in an area that really excites you and you're really interested about. The other key thing that we've done with the curriculum is that we now have the addition of some really um, specific minors. So industry told us that some of the biggest challenges for our, that our graduates will face in the future is dealing with big data. So we've introduced a data science minor that's available across all the specialisations. So every single engineering graduate will have that as, as an opportunity to study in that area if they want to. So Charlotte, what do you love most about your degree at UQ? Uh, there's actually so many things. I mean, firstly, the group assignments, group work. I really love those kinds of subjects. But, uh, you know, I've had so many opportunities like going over to Cambodia with Engineers Without Borders, going on exchange to Dublin, um, participating in social sport. There's been so many aspects of my degree that I've really loved. <laughs> so, Lisa, what are the benefits of a flexible first year? Well, UQ's had a flexible first year for as long as I can remember. It's a real hallmark of engineering at UQ and I guess the whole reason behind having a flexible first year is that students often come in not knowing very much about engineering, they know a little bit and they come into a flexible first year and all of a sudden they find out that what they can study is so much wider and so much broader than they'd ever imagined. And so flexible first year is great for those students to, I guess, learn a bit about the breadth and depth of engineering before they make their minds up. But it also allows students who do know what they want to do to actually start on that path. But we actually find a lot of students actually come in saying, oh, I'm definitely going to be a mechanical engineer and then they actually change their mind and they might do civil engineering after they've experienced first year. So it yeah. does happen. Well personally I loved chemistry in high school so I came in thinking I was going to do chemical engineering and then when I did your course Eng 1400 I loved it and I switched over to civil so. <laughs> Excellent, good to see I get all the good ones in civil. <laughs> so Lisa this is my final question, what does engineering look like in the future? If I had the perfect answer to that one, I'd be a really wealthy person because um, <laughs> you're asking me the crystal ball gaze. But I think it's going to be more and more complex. We are going to be the profession that provides a lot of the answers to society's problems. So we know we need to deal with climate change, we need to deal with renewable energy, we need to feed the world and we need to provide fresh water for the world. Um, and they are actually all engineering problems. And so engineering graduates are going to be a key part of actually finding solutions to those problems. But I think the other way that engineering is changing is that engineering graduates are being asked not to be just solution providers, but also being asked to actually identify problems. So that problem identification is going to become really important. We're going to have to deal with big data and we're actually going to have to take the stage and actually communicate to people what we do as a profession because we have the biggest impact on the world and to be a great engineer, being able to actually communicate that narrative to beyond your own area of expertise to the broader community is going to be a really powerful requirement of our graduates and I think UQ engineering graduates are really well placed to do that.